So before we get into the kind of bigger models, let's get some really quick but very, very important guidance tips in place first of all. Number one, it's not even on the list of numbers, but it's right at the top here. Failures will always outnumber your successes, but don't take this personally. If you phone 10 people, you're going to get nine and a half no's. If you phone 100 people, you'll get nine, 10, 15, 20 possibles, one or two definites. Never, ever take it personally. It's just about timing. That's it. Now, what you should do is learn from every every few calls. Think about what can I try differently? Am I sounding fresh? Am I sounding too much like a salesperson? I know it sounds crazy, but that's what puts a lot of customers off. Hi, good morning. My name's Graham. I'm calling from X Super Duper Laser Guided Missiles. Can I interest you? No, straight away, they're turning off. So back it right up. Always show a deep interest in your customer and a really deep respect for their time and intelligence. Hello, good morning. Is that Mr. Smith? Mr. Smith, good morning to you. My name is Graham. I'm calling from Laser Guided Wonder Missiles. Now, we've not spoken before, but I'm just giving you a quick call. Straight away, they're listening. Straight away, they haven't put up that barrier in their brain, that kind of BS detector that tells them to be on their guard. So make sure that you always show a deep interest and respect to your customers. Number two, treat each call as new and individual. Don't make it sound like the 20th call or the fifth call you've made that morning. Always prepare your objectives in advance but don't expect too much from your first call to a particular contact. Go at the pace of the customer. Sometimes customers want to get straight to the point. What is this about? Fine, get to the point. Other times customers are more talkative and they'll be happy to discuss things. Be alert and be flexible. Number five. When you hear something positive, ask for some form of commitment. Is that something you're considering at the moment? Is that an important area for you? Is this a project a priority for you right now? Is this something you'll be looking at in the next three or four months? Number six, close on the small steps. Incremental commitment. The staircase commitment approach is well known in many sales toolkits now. So try and get a small commitment. And if you don't ask, you don't get. People are more likely to be consistent or have a need psychologically to be consistent with a previously expressed interest. For example, if you ask somebody, are you responsible for making decisions in the area of vehicle leasing, if they say yes, they're more likely to follow through when you ask them for their feedback on some aspect of your service. Seven, if you get something negative, acknowledge it and talk about it. Possibly the most challenging would be that they've used your business in the past, but had some kind of negative experience. Rather than try and argue, ask them what happened and what was the situation. And maybe apologise and express some regret that that was the case. Number eight, let the customer guide the topic of conversation. Your proper sheet should guide you, but it shouldn't be rigid. It should allow you to, to opt into different areas of conversation. Number nine, always prepare the call. Gather the information you need about the customer about your product or service, have your diary to hand. If somebody says, yes, that would be great, when can you get here? Then don't suddenly have no diary. Also make sure you're not going to be distracted. Get people who work around you or in the office not to distract you, turn off your emails, turn off your phone, stay focused. 10. Work out your opening statement. This is one of the most important things of all. 
When people meet each other, they often have uh, an accentuated attention on what's going on in that initial few seconds. It's going right back to when we first meet someone face to face, we make eye contact, we shake hands, and invariably we talk about the weather or travel. These are neutral topics which allow us to assess the other person and their mood. At the basic level, are they friend or foe? And this is exactly the same on the phone. Answer, the, ask the questions, announce yourself slowly and calmly. Use a voice tonality that is the same as you were talking to somebody you know, but not that well. So talk as you would chat, but not, but not as you would, sorry, talk as you would have a conversation, but not as you would chat. So, hi, good morning. Is that Mr. Johnson? Good morning, Mr. Johnson. How are you today? Now, we haven't spoken before. I'm calling from Super Duper Builders. You may have heard of us. Now, the reason I'm calling you is because that kind of approach is more likely to have a receptive ear than some kind of fast talking, high pressure sales approach. Number 11, do not ask a commitment in your opening statement. It's too much too soon. What do I mean asking for commitment? Is that something you'll be interested in? Would you be interested in meeting up? Those kind of things. We'll come on to that in just a moment. Now, there are 13 basic rules. You can see these on the page. They're in the workbook that accompanies this course. Put the customer first. Run the call they want to run it. You must have a good greeting. Good morning, good afternoon. Sound positive. Check their name, not yours. Consider using just your first name. If your full name is unusual or difficult to pronounce, you might even have an acceptable nickname. Make a big flat claim. We'll talk about this later. Big fat claims can justify why the customer could give you their time. Have factual and emotional evidence to back up any claims you make. Finish with a question to invite a response. If they interrupt you, great, let them and let them talk. You might ask if they can spare a couple of minutes for you. If they cannot, arrange to call back. Make an appointment for a phone call. This is very common these days. People don't often take a call unless it's predetermined. And then it's not a cold call, of course. Many people will tell me that if you don't ask, have you got a moment to speak? Or have I caught you at a convenient time to talk? If the person phoning doesn't ask that, they will just hang up or the chance of getting any further has diminished dramatically it's just a basic human respect and good manners i would always recommend doing that have i caught you at a good moment do you have a minute to spare i want to ask you a few questions and introduce myself the opening part of a call will be done and dusted in around 15 seconds you need to prepare carefully and practice it well. Record your opening, listen to it, analyze it, ask for advice. In fact, I would recommend doing that with the whole call. Just make sure that you review them and learn from them. And when you do make improvements to the, the way you run the phone call, make one change at a time. When you are successful, ask why. When you get an appointment or a positive action from a, from a customer or contact, go back and find out what was it you did or said, or importantly, how you said it. Get feedback and develop your skills. Number 13, the best advice I can give anybody when they're making phone calls to try and sell or persuade anybody for anything is be honest and you will sound more comfortable and more amenable to meet with.